Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Vladimir Padnos. I am Director of Marketing and Support of Terra Analysis, and today we will discuss how to calculate the inductances in quick field. After my short introduction about monadic analysis with quick field, my colleague Alex Lubimsev will explain and show in practical examples how to calculate the inductances of various devices using quick field models. This slide shows uh, how to communicate with us during this event. Questions and comments may be sent to us using the webinar panel, and simple questions we will answer by sending you our responses via the same panel. More complicated, we will answer at the end of the event, and most hard questions will be answered by email after we finish this, this webinar. So let's start. QuickField is a tool for finite element simulations of various types of physical problems. Set of options includes electric analysis, magnetic analysis, thermal and stress analysis. Different types of analysis may be combined for couplet multiphysical simulations. Uh, the, the results of one simulation are imported to other analysis. This provides possibility of taking into account various physical effects like thermal dependency of magnetic properties or heat generation in electromagnetic processes. These diverse options may be applied to very different areas of electrical engineering, physical researches, biology, medicine, etc., etc., etc. Among them, there is a magnetic system analysis, and we should mention that magnetic analysis is one of the strongest parts of the field with very powerful post processor. On this slide, you see how many types of presentations of the field and different field parameters may be calculated in quick field. Let's discuss common approaches for magnetic analysis in quick field. First of all, uh, we use finite elements, and due to nature of this technology, we need to have closed calculation region. Uh, magnetic field may be uh, infinite. It may, it may go uh, may fade to very far distance, but we need to restrict it, and it uh, brings us some computational error. But for most practical purposes, if we make external boundary uh, more than 10 times farther than the size of your object, the accuracy is pretty good. So first, you should remember to enclose your system by some boundary and make it not too close to the object. Second, uh, quick field use magnetics formulated as a one component vector potential. For this type of formulations, we always need to calibrate the system. So we need to define some part of the model with known potential value. Usually, uh, it is convenient to define the external boundary and apply zero potential on it. It means there is no field outside. So, for most practical applications, external boundary should have zero boundary condition. It calibrates the system and allows us to solve it in vector potential formulation. And it is also should be understood what ever if there is only one current in the system, there is always a return current. So, if you don't show uh, direct and return currents in your model, it is supposed that the return path for the current goes on the, some external boundary. So it is better to define both currents. It's more physically clear. But if not, the return path is the external boundary. So uh, inductance is a coefficient between flux and current. And uh, there are many ways to use different formulas for induction calculations. In quick field, we use two approaches. One is shown on this first formula. We divide flux by current. We generate this flux. And alternative approach, we may use formula for magnetic energy. And both formulas should, in theory, bring the same values of inductance. But in different practical cases, sometimes it's more convenient to use first or second formula. Yes. yes. Mm. 
the examples we will study today are the inductance of the ring, the inductance of the pair of the wires, the coaxial cable inductance and the solenoid inductance. Then we will calculate the mutual inductance. And in the last part, I will show you how to calculate the inductance of the transmission line. Now let's start with the first example, the wiring inductance. There is a ring of the thin wire. The ring radius is 100 millimeters and the wire radius is 5 millimeters. There is some current flowing in the ring and the task is to find the inductance of the ring. This case has a simple analytical solution. You can see the equation on the screen. And this formula gives accurate result if the wire is thin compared to the ring radius. Now let's simulate this case in quick field. This is quick field. I create new problem. The problem name is wiring. The problem type is magnetostatics. The model class is axisymmetric. This means that there is an axis of rotation. And in the model, only the upper half of the device is present. The length units are millimeters. Done. Now we have the empty problem with the empty model. Here I should draw the, the ring. This is my ring. The, this is the cross section of the wire. And I should add the air to calculate the magnetic field outside the ring. Now the model is ready and I should label all objects in my model. This is the wire. And this is the air. And this is the calculation boundary. The next step is to assign physical properties to the labels. For the air, I specify magnetic permeability one. For the wire, I specify magnetic permeability one and the current source one ampere. Far away from the ring, the field phase to zero. 
and at the boundary I specify zero magnetic potential. Now everything is ready, let's run the simulation. I will build the mesh. It's fully automatic, just press one button. Self, save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem is solved. We can see the field distribution, the field lines. And to calculate the inductance, I can use the inductance wizard. I will calculate the inductance through the flux and current. I choose the wire to calculate flux. And I choose the wire to calculate the current. And this is the inductance value. Let's compare this value with the theoretical result. I will show you again. Flux, current, the inductance. This is the theoretical result and this is the value I get with quick field. You see there is a difference between these values. If you need more accurate result, just build the dense mesh with quick field. You can improve the results using automatic mesh refinement. The mesh will be refined based on the solution I get. Please take a look at the model. You can see the mesh was refined. Again I get the field distribution. and the inductance value now. Is 4.16. It's the simple transmission line consisting of two conductors. There is a direct conductor and the back conductor. The length of the line is supposed to be infinite. This means that we ignore side effects that occur at the beginning and the ending of the transmission line. Again, this case has a simple analytical solution. You can see the equation on the screen. This formula gives accurate results if the wire is thin comparing to the distance between wires. Let's simulate this case in quick field. I have the problem ready. The problem type is magnetostatics. The model class is plain parallel. And I will calculate the inductance value per one meter of depth. This is my model. This is the air.
this is the back current. I set minus one ampere in this conductor. And this is the conductor with direct current. One ampere. And this is the far away boundary. With zero magnetic potential. Let's take a look at the simulation result. You can see the field lines. I will switch on the vector plot. Now I can see how the flux flows and I can measure the flux to calculate the inductance. I will build the contour between conductors to calculate the flux. The magnetic flux is 1.9 to one Mika Webers. And if I divide this value by the current value, which is one ampere, I will get the inductance of one point nine to one micro Henry's. Let's compare this value with the theoretical result. You can see in quick field I get the smaller value than the theoretically calculated. There is a difference but what have we missed? We forgot about self-inductance of the conductors. Let me show you. There is a flux inside the conductor. And my contour, my integration contour, does not include these flux. It is not calculated here, so we get smaller value. Let's correct my mistake. I will correct the contour and add small parts to my contour to calculate both external and internal flux. Now, what is the flux value? The flux value is 2.12 microvapors and the inductance will be 2.12 microhenry. Again, let's compare with the theoretical result. Now I get the bigger value than theoretically calculated. Why is it happening again? Let's take a look at the conductor. Please take a look at 
at the field lines in conductor. Only center part of the conductor, only center current is linked with the full flux. It is linked with internal flux and external flux. The current that flows on the surface of the conductor is not linked with internal flux. It is linked with external flux only. To get accurate value of inner inductance, we should take into account the amount of the current that is linked with the inner flux. In fact, this function is already implemented in quick field. It is called the flux linkage per one term integral. The value I get is 1.01 .01 microrebers. Now we should remember that there is the second conductor and the total flux would be 2.02 microrebers and the inductance will be 2.02 .02 microhenry. Let's compare with the theory. 2.02 .02 2.03. Now the difference is only in the third digit and the, it is less than 1%. And what about the built-in inductance wizards? You can use them as well. Let me show you how to use the wizard in this problem. The wizard asks to specify the direct and back current to calculate the flux. Then you should specify the current. And this is the inductance value, 2.2. They are close to the theoretical result. The inductance wizard has the second approach based on the magnetic field energy calculation. Let's try to calculate the inductance through the magnetic field energy. I press the button to calculate the magnetic field energy. And quick field, then, then I choose the current and QQ gives me the inductance value. In fact, you can calculate the stored energy manually. You need to select the entire region. and use this integral magnetic field energy. 1.0124 There is no magic here. You can use either way manual calculations or built-in wizards to find the duct's value. Now let's move to the next example. This is the coaxial cable 
inductance example. The transmission line in previous example generates intensive external field. The way to reduce the external field is using the coaxial cables. The cable consists of two conductors with direct and back currents. There is some insulation between conductors. And to calculate the inductance of the coaxial cable, you can use analytical equation. Here you can see it. Let's try quick field and find the inductance with quick field. This is my problem. Again, the problem type is magnetostatics. The model class is plane parallel. And I will calculate the inductance per one meter of the cable length. Here is the model. This is the massive conductor with the label I plus. And the current, the direct current flows in this conductor. The back current flows at the outer surface. And this is the insulation. And as the field is locked inside the cable and there is no external field, we can place the boundary right here on the cable surface. I remember it's just the reference point. And on the cable surface I specify zero magnetic potential. Let's take a look at the simulation results. These are the field lines in the cable. Let's calculate the inductance. I will use the wizard to calculate the inductance. I will calculate the flux linked with my conductor and divide it by the current. Now this is the inductance calculated by Quickfield. Let's compare with the theoretical result. These values match perfectly. In previous examples, artificially limited calculation area yielded to errors in results. Now the model fully agrees with the physics and we get accurate results. Okay, we have finished with simple examples and now move to the solenoid inductance calculation. This is my solenoid. You can see the dimensions of the solenoid on the screen. The number of turns is 1000. And the length of the solenoid is half a meter. The inductance of the solenoid can be calculated by the well-known formula. And the inductance of 
My solenoid is 7.106 millihenni. This formula does not take into account the side effects that occur at the beginning and the ending of the solenoid. Let's simulate this case in quick health. And this is my problem. The problem type is magnetostatics. The model class is axisymmetric. This means that there is an axis of rotation, a horizontal one, and in the model on the upper half of the device is presented. Now this is my solenoid. It consists of the winding There are 1,000 turns in the winding and one ampere in the conductor. The core, there is no core in my solenoid, it is just the air, the permeability of one. There is an air outside and the far away from the solenoid the field page to zero and I said zero magnetic potential there. First let's simulate the ideal solenoid. I switch off the air, I exclude the air from the calculation. Let's take a look at the result. You can see the few lines in the solenoid. They are straight lines, there are no side effects. I will switch on the color map. You can see that the flux density distribution inside the solenoid is uniform. Let's calculate the inductance. I build the contour here to calculate the flux. The magnetic flux value is 7.106 microbebers. I should multiply this value by the square number of turns and divide this value by the current 1000 ampere. So the inductance would be 7.106 millihenni. Let's compare with the theoretical result. It's a perfect match again because it's ideal solenoid. Let's simulate the real solenoid. I switch on the air and solve the problem again. Now you can see the field lines of the real solenoid. There is an external field
let's switch on the color map. The inductance is uniform only in the center part of the solenoid. There is a side effect. Now let's calculate the inductance. But to calculate the inductance, I should build the contour. Where should I build this contour? In the central part? Or here at the side of the solenoid? Which is correct? The answer is none is correct. The correct way is to calculate the flux linkage with the winding. I select the winding, calculate the flux linkage, multiply this value by the square number of terms and divide it by the total current value, 1000 ampere. And the inductance would be 7.48 millihenry. This is the inductance of the real solenoid with the external field and side effects. And the inductance calculated by the theoretical for the ideal solenoid is not the one that the inductance for the real solenoid. Now let's move to the next example. It's the mutual inductance calculation. There are two rings, the big one and the small one. The current flows in the big ring it induces the magnetic field and magnetic flux flows through the ring and some part of this magnetic flux is linked with the sm small ring. The mutual inductance is the ratio of the flux linked with the small ring to the current in the big ring. For this simple case there is an analytical solution but it's not very simple this solution. These equations are based on the Biosara law and the meanings of these variables are shown here. The theoretically calculated value of mutual inductance is true for the very thin wires. Let's simulate this case in quick field and find the mutual inductance with quick field. Now, the, this is my problem problem to calculate the mutual inductance. The problem type is magnetostatics. The model class is axisymmetric. This means that there is the axis of rotation and in the model on the upper half of the device is included. Now, this is the model. As I told you, the theoretical formula is true for very thin wires. So, in quick field, the wires are represented by dots. 
this is the bigger ring and there is some current in this ring The second, the smaller ring, carries no current. To calculate self of mutual inductance, you should switch off all field sources but one. Otherwise, you will not be able to determine which current generates which part of the flux. So my second ring is switched off. There is an air in my model and the external boundary is moved to the two meters far from my rings. Let's take a look at the simulation result. These are the field lines generated by the current in the big ring. To calculate the mutual inductance, I should find the flux linked with the smaller ring. Here is located my small ring and this is the contour to integrate the flux. I will show the vectors. To calculate the flux that pass through the small ring, this part of the flux. The magnetic flux is 3.237. Let's compare with the theoretical result. You can see there is a difference in the third digit, so the accuracy is about 1%. If you need better accuracy, you should move the external boundary further away. Now it's moved to the two meters from my ink and I will move it to the five meters. The problem is simulated. Let's create the flux again. Now the difference is in the fourth digit, it's less than. The last example I will show you today is the transmission line inductance calculation. Transmission line consists of three conductors, conductors A, B, C, and the single inductance value is not enough to describe this system. There are self-inductances of each conductor and the mutual inductances between conductors. All in all, there are 
nine inductance values to calculate. Now the question is how these values can be calculated. The flux linked with conductor A depends on the current in the conductor A and all other currents. If I switch off all currents but A and measure, measure the flux, I can find the self-inductance of the conductor A. If I switch all currents but B and measure the flux, I can find the mutual inductance between conductor B and A. As there are only three conductance in my model, I need to simulate three problems to find all partial inductances. It's not a tiresome task, but there are systems with much more number of conductors. And to find the coefficients of matrix, say, 20 by 20, is a very time-consuming task. So I decided to automate my task, and the algorithm of calculation is very simple. First, I should switch off all conductors. I will assign their count to all conductors but one conductor. Then I solve quick field problem and calculate the flux linkage. And by this flux linkage, I can calculate the inductances. And again, I repeat the cycle for the second conductor and for the third conductor. This way, I will find all partial inductances values. QuickField has an open object interface. It can interact with other applications, and many programming languages support this programming interface. And to program this algorithm, I use Microsoft Excel and the Visual Basic for applications. Let me show you. This is my quick field problem. This is the transmission line with three conductors, A, B, C, A, B, C. This is the air, and this is the ground. Now, my reference point is ground. I set zero magnetic potential on the ground surface. So, I should assign some current to the A, zero currents to other conductors, Solve the problem and calculate the flux. And this is the Excel file. This is the table where I will store the inductance values. And let me show you my problem. It's, it's very simple. This is my problem in Excel VBA. First, I create the link to QuickField. 
Then I take the first problem in Quickfield. Then there is an initialization part. I tell my program the names of the conductors to assign data. And I tell my program the coordinates of the conductors to calculate the flux linkage, to build contour, to build contour and calculate the flux linkage. Now, after the initialization and coordinates calculation, my cycle starts. I take the first conductor and set zero count for all conductors by but my first. For my first conductor, I set the count. Then I save the problem, solve the problem, analyze the result, and calculate the flux for each conductor. And then I, I place the, I divide the, the flux by the current and place the values in the X. So that's simple. It's the same task I would do in quick field manually. But now it's programmed in Excel. Let me show you this skip in action. Create link to quick field. Take a test problem in quick field. Initialization. Tell my program conductors' names. Then I will load the model. And in the model, I will calculate the coordinates of the conductors. And now the cycle starts. I will show you both. Excel and quick field Now, in my Excel, I take the first conductor, and for each conductor, you can see the data file was opened. I set the count for my first conductor and for for my first conductor for E. And for all other conductors, I set zero count. It's zero. Then, after the problem is adjusted, I save the data file, I solve the problem, you can see the quick field solved the problem and I operate quick field from the Excel file. Now I analyze the result, open the result window, and calculate the 
flux for flux linkage for each conductor. And the result is stored in the Excel file. Then I choose the second conductor. I will run the script now without break points. Now the problems are solved and the inductance values are calculated. And the result you can see in the table. The same script you can use for the large system of conductors and you can automate different tasks using QuickField object interface. In fact, we, we use this programming interface ourselves too. In QuickField there are tools, label mirror, harmonic browser and other that interact with QuickField through the programming interface. It's open it's free and you can do it for yourself. That was the last example for today. Thank you for your attention. Vladimir? Thank you, Alex.